All right. Welcome, everyone, to Nerd of the Rings. Thank you so much for joining us on today's special live stream. Um, today, we're having our first interview here on the channel. Joining me today is Julia Golding. And Julia is an author, and as you're watching this channel, you're probably aware, um, she is also heading up Project Northmore, which is the effort to purchase J.R.R. Tolkien's home and convert it into a literary center. Uh, Julia, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Well, this is, how this is going to work, uh, just so everybody knows in the chat and everything, everyone watching, um, I've reached out to my Patreon and YouTube supporters ahead of time to get some questions from them. And uh, sorry about that. Um, my audio is feeding back a little bit there. Uh, so as well as um, asking for questions from Twitter and Facebook and my Patreon supporters, um, we've got a good number of uh, fan questions lined up. If we're able, we'll also take questions from the live stream comments. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you didn't see in the comments, all Super Chats today will be donated to Project North Northmore. So if you'd like to give that way, you can also give on their website. Um, so first of all, uh, Julia, for those who maybe haven't heard about the project yet, tell us about Project Northmore. Well, you're probably aware that um, many authors already have a house dedicated to them. I'm sitting here in the UK. So here we've already got very well-established centers for Jane Austen, Dickens, Wordsworth, Shakespeare. And it's always struck me that why don't we have one for Tolkien? Because um, as a sort of cultural figure, he is unarguably so influential. But, well, I, I don't need to tell this audience, but you know, with the, uh, the fantasy genre, which he more or less helped establish uh, the kind of very big constructed other world um, fantasy. And He's obviously moved well into popular culture with the, uh, the films uh, followed on more recently. Anyway, so I thought it would be lovely if somebody did it. And, uh, and then I saw that the Tolkien house was up for sale. What I mean by the Tolkien house, because he lived in quite a few houses during yeah. his life. He moved around. Um, this is the house that he was in from 1930 to 1947. It was the probably one of the longest stretches, if not the longest stretch in a single property. And particularly valuable to us as fans is that it's the place where he wrote down The Hobbit and he did the vast majority of writing on The Lord of the Rings. In terms of his family life, it's the period when he had a young family growing up. And by the end of that period, we've gone through the um, Second World War and his son, um, he was writing Lord of the Rings and sending it to his son who was in the, I think it was the Air Force in South Africa. I think if I've got that right. That sounds right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's check my facts here. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and I think that connection between the fact that Tolkien himself was in the trenches, seeing his own son end up in another war must have been mm. in a very, uh, that 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 feeling I think is behind a lot of the battles in Lord of the Rings, that painfulness of waiting on the edge of the battle, waiting for news. Anyway, so this house is full of those books and it is the one house I think which would work as a place where you can go and intersect in a sort of real sense with Tolkien's life. Now there are some limitations on what you can do in what is actually a residential street uh, in Oxford. So you can't do a sort of Disneyland experience. You can't throw the doors open to the general public to file through. So I was thinking what would actually respect Tolkien's legacy uh, and give a really positive thing to his, uh, his fan base. And I thought that the idea of a creative center, I call it mainly a literary center, but uh, I think because of the there's a lot of artists and illustrators influenced by Tolkien. We're going to have a little bit of that in it as well. Mm. Um, but the idea is that if you're a writer of fantasy or a screenwriter, poet, um, we'll hold courses for people to come and sit in small groups with a tutor in the house, uh, stay in the house. Um, you know, these will be small groups. We're talking sort of groups of 10 or 15. Um, if we do any larger events, the house might be in some sense a, a base, but we would, yeah, I'm getting really excited here, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> we would use, uh, in Oxford, you would have, you have larger venues around you that you can go to for uh, 
you know a larger seminar but it's not um a research center in, in an academic sense it's about creativity creative writing because that's my that's what makes me get up in the morning um and i really enjoy in i i myself have been on courses like this and uh, i would love to be able to establish something in honor of tolkien um uh, right here okay um so uh one of the first questions and this is a question i got actually quite a lot um was um sorry um so for um those of us who are not writers like myself who could not write a five page paper if my life depended on it <laughs> i'm yeah. naturally curious so if i say i decide to go down the road across the ocean for a quick trip to oxford yeah. will i be able to visit the home um we're developing our ideas about the course and we've put some details up on the website which uh do go and have a look at because um we are open to suggestions okay yeah not everybody uh is a writer um that would be terrible wouldn't it um yeah. <laughs> So we did Not to say I wouldn't pose as one so that I could get into Tolkien's <laughs> house, but it would be easier if I didn't have to. We did think that um, another course that you could either do um, a week writing and put this on at the end or just come for the, the, the short course. That would be, we've called it um, walking and writing in the Shire. That would be to visit the local places around the house and talk about the, um, what Tolkien was drawing on here. I mean, I think that's really what we what we can offer that other places mm -hmm. uh, other places can't is that um, Middle Earth starts on the doorstep of this house, uh, and uh, I think that would be fascinating. Even if you are never going to pick up a pen and write yourself, just understanding where the inspirations for certain landscapes and ideas and all all within an easy journey from the house. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so next question comes from uh, Patreon supporter Casey. Tell us about your experience with Tolkien and your inspiration for pursuing such a large project, which you kind of touched on a little bit, but tell us about your uh, experience with Tolkien and um, what gave you the drive for this project. This is my favorite question because obviously I wouldn't be doing this incredibly time intensive thing if I wasn't motivated by a deep love for Tolkien. It all starts when I was about 10, I think. Somehow I wasn't read The Hobbit when I was younger. Um, my family wasn't hugely bookish. So I started with Lord of the Rings. And I vividly remember one summer holiday lying on the sofa and reading pretty much solidly for a few days, however long it took me, uh, all the way through the trilogy. And I got to the end of The Return of the King and sort of leafed my way through the appendices, hoping for a bit more story because um, there are a few little snippets. Yes, it? absolutely. Uh, if, if you're persistent. Um, and then I thought, well, oh, I, I can't leave this world. So I went back to the first book again and just started. And in a sense, that's the, I'm quite a few more years older than that now. And <laughs> I probably read Lord of the Rings once a year. Yeah. Or I've recently, because I've become an audible, um, mm. yeah, I get lots of books from audible. I've got the Rob Ingalls, uh, complete one. Yes. So walking the dogs, I often sort of dip into him because I think he is my idea of what Tolkien might have sounded like. Yeah, I could uh, see that. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I myself am big on on Tolkien audiobooks as well, including like the uh, the dramatizations. I can re recommend those very wholeheartedly by uh, Brian yeah. Sibley. Those are fantastic. That was a bit that I remember those as a child. I, I recorded those off the radio. This is how old <laughs> I am. Um, I recorded those off the radio on cassette tapes um, and would wait to start it as the <laughs> pre-record thing there. Um, and actually, when you look at that cast, there's some wonderful connections between the Lord of the Rings films. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm trying to find out if the Bill Nye who plays Sam in that is the same as the famous Bill Nye. Yes, it is. It is. The, from... Pirates of the Caribbean and yeah. many, many other things. Yes. Yeah. It's the same the guy. Sounds so oh, well, thank you. You, you put that one to bed for me. I <laughs> find it on his, uh, you know, I, I was sort of trying to. Hunt yeah. His, Sam, his Samwise is fantastic. Yeah. The other, the other um, audiobook I like is the, I think it's Martin Shaw who reads the Silmarillion. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. Still Marillion, I think many people find it quite a different tone and, and experience. Whereas mm -hmm. when it's read by a really good actor, it has a saga majesty to it. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. I've, I've sort of fallen in love with the Silmarillion again when it was always my sort of, oh, okay, I'll have a go at that one again. It was never the one I would rush to. Yes. And so I think it's a really good... We're doing good plugs here for all of these books. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> we should be sponsored by Audible today, I guess. <laughs> um, well, uh, so we were first uh, introduced to the project, of course, with uh, Sir Ian McKellen. Yeah. Um, posting on Twitter, he shared your uh, announcement video announcing the effort. Um, obviously, there was a a very impressive group of people. We had uh, Sir Ian himself, Martin Freeman, um, John Rhys Davies, John Howe. Uh, many others, Annie Lennox, um, just a wonderful group. So how did you assemble such a, a great group? And what was that process like uh, getting, getting that video together? Okay, so this is really the story of the project. The house has been up for sale for a little bit. Um, and I, I had thought about doing this centre in different ways, working out. But when the pandemic came along, I thought, you know, just can't do this. Um, and I put it put it aside. I'd done a lot of talking to the neighbours and going to the local council, those sorts of things. Um, but then in the I'm um, in the UK. Then at the beginning of November, we went into a second lockdown, and I thought the first one was relatively easy because it mm -hmm. was summer. This one just felt so depressing. November, you know. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, what can I do that's positive? And my lockdown project was to actually see, test the theory that Tolkien fans want a Tol Tolkien centre, um, a literary centre, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably it was the, um, the bravery of ignorance. I just thought, well, I'm going to go and ask people who like Tolkien if they want to <laughs> front the video. Um, I did have, have uh, I did know in a distant fashion, um, some of the people who are in the, the video and once you get one person, they, they can say, Oh yeah, I'll pass you on to. And so it sort mm -hmm. of has like a chain like that. Yeah. Uh, all, I should say that all those um, celebrities very generously donated their time. They are not in any way responsible for my project. They are just saying, you know, off you go project Northmore, see if you can make this work. Um, and I think we opened the champagne when we got such a positive response from Ian McKellen. He was, he's been so kind. And um, I think this, what I like about it, all these people coming on board is that it's not because I asked at all, is it? Who am I? Nobody. They're, they're coming because it's Tolkien and their careers have been so networked with him that um, they, they, I suppose they want to help make this happen in some way to honor Tolkien. At least that's what I assume is going on. Uh, <laughs> The funniest thing was the, the last contribution we got was Martin Freeman, not because he was late. It's just that I was doing this within about three weeks. Mm. My life has been crazy recently. <laughs> um, but I thought it was wonderful that the last video was him coming because it reminded me of the bit at the beginning of The Hobbit where he joins the company <laughs> by running through Hobbiton. Yeah. Um, you know, so that was that was very enjoyable to see him. And that was a real surprise. I, I can. I remember when I got that email. I was. We had a, a plumbing emergency, and I was trying to deal with the plumber. <laughs> His ordinary life, and then pop, my phone goes, and there's uh, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman. Yeah. So, you know, plumber Martin Freeman. It was yeah, like, just another day in the life. Yeah. <laughs> well, great. Um, so you mentioned the the timeline a little bit there for getting the video together. So how long have you kind of had your eye on? Uh, this location well I live in uh, Oxford so uh, I'm, I'm aware of the house um, and of course it's been in private hands I think it last changed hands 2004 or five something like that uh, okay. I can't, it's about the same time it was listed um, so it's let's say it's almost two decades ago so I've just admired it from a distance you know wave as I go past. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was when I saw the signboard had gone up that I started thinking about this. And that goes back to the conversations I was having locally, because it's not, as I was saying, it's a residential street. 
Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in the center of a city, like um, one of the Dickens has several museums. There's one in the middle of London, which works like a museum. So empty rooms that you can go in in large numbers. You can't do that in a house. So this one is a bit more like, um, there's two in the UK where it's a bit more like, it's uh, there's the Wordsworth Cottage up in um, Grasmere. And then there's Ted Hughes, who's a poet, his house in uh, Yorkshire, which is the center of another excellent writing center. They do um, they do every kind of writing. It's, it's a much bigger, okay. broader spectrum. Um, I think that Tolkien is so particular that we're talking about really the fantasy genre, mm-hmm. uh, aren't we? Yeah, um, that was actually going to be my next question. Was you know, are there are there comparable um, uh, places, you know, centers like like what you're aiming to do? You know, do you have inspiration in other places where people have done similar things for other authors? Yeah, so um, I'll give them a plug because they need support during this difficult time. Uh, the Arvin Center is the one from the Ted Hughes House, um, and I've been both a participant and a teacher on those courses. And um, my husband's been on that course even before we met. So it, it's been going for many, many years. They have a, a great program. So I think we'll be slightly, you know, we're not trying to replicate their, what they do because they don't have, um, they don't have a single focus and they do. Uh, so I, I've been on a poetry course and a, uh, all sorts of writing for children courses there, that kind of thing. Um, we're, we're about talking though. We're not, we're going to have that as our heart that mm-hmm. i mean why why else would we be doing this yeah. it's going to be the heart is going to be um using Tolkien as our starting point great um so my next question uh comes from another patreon supporter uh live long with the force that's a star mm-hmm. wars reference but yeah. that's okay we'll we'll take it um <laughs> how do you envision sharing the life and works of Tolkien within the house and uh i'll kind of add on to this what what would a a typical week or month look like um, if the project's successful and, you know, you accomplish all your goals, what, what would it uh, look like on a, on a day to day or week to week basis? I think not, not every week is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Um, And we'd obviously start and build up as we see what interests there are in different courses, but let's imagine the courses that I've already imagined and the ones I've been planning and thinking about and talking to people about, whether or not they'd um, want to participate as tutors, that kind of thing. So um, a small group would stay in the house and the house would be run as a home by the, I called it the warden. I, I, I'm thinking maybe the gaffer. Anyway, the person who makes the house a home. Uh, and so you would live together um, and you'd all have a bedroom, maybe shared depending on um, what your life circumstances because obviously if you share, it's cheaper. Um, <laughs> and uh, a place to write. And you would have a morning where you would have um, seminars and tutorials. One, so sometimes group work, sometimes one-on-one sessions. Then the afternoon, there would be guided tours, walking tours, this is, from the house. And there's so much you can see. Um, so that would be a bit more energetic, exploring Oxford, going to see the sites associated with Tolkien. I put a bit more detail about this on the website. Great. And then in the evening, after a, a meal together, um, there would be a chance to share work, have guest speakers, so you would sort of change each evening. Um, so it would be, but what you'd get as well, which I think is perhaps until you've been on one of these courses, you don't quite understand is you get the group by the time you spent a week together, you also get a bunch of friends mm. and uh, in a supportive atmosphere, sharing what you're doing. And in fact, a lot of the learning goes between individuals. So, th- so that's the idea. And then mm-hmm. uh, you'd finish well, a, a celebratory evening and everyone returns to from whence they came. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you might have mentioned this earlier, but I, I think I missed it. How, what is uh, roughly the number of uh, people that you could you're expecting to be able to house it at a time? Yeah, so the house has, um, let me get this right, six bedrooms upstairs and one disabled access bedroom downstairs. Wow. It would have been a reception room in Tolkien's day, but obviously we want to make it accessible. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also a disabled access 
bathroom downstairs already, which is great because uh, we would absolutely would have wanted to put one in. Um, so that is that depends on if people are. So if you're coming uh, as a young student, you'd probably be absolutely fine sharing a room with somebody else. <laughs> so you can do the multiples. Whereas if you want to mm. book out a whole room yourself, then right. the numbers will be smaller. Yeah. So it will be you get what you pay for in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, because we'd want to, I think we'd cap the numbers uh, in the house at, you don't want more than 15, definitely not. Mm -hmm. I think a, a good number is 10. And I've seen this in courses myself. I think 10 is like the perfect number. Somewhere right. between 10 and 15. Because the dynamic means the group doesn't break apart. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, not every week would be like that. There'll be right. um, some weeks where you can come and stay on retreat. Now, this is one of those words which I think has been misunderstood. I mean, writing retreat, everybody. Uh, so you come and if you want to work on your book, uh, you can come and say, make an appointment for tutor, but it wouldn't be a formal program like I've uh, described. It would be um, using the house as a place to retreat to, to bash out a few words. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you from experience that there are moments in a book where you really just have to go away and say, right, I'm going to yeah. dedicate this time to finishing. Um, so there'll be quieter weeks like that. Uh, and then for the, the general population, like you mentioned, um, there'll be the, the ones where you're sort of doing more of, I suppose it's more informational, isn't it? The one where mm -hmm. you're traveling around seeing uh, the local places. Yeah, great. All right. But I must say yeah. that um, I don't want, to, don't want to make it sound as though I've got every last detail buttoned up. I really think <laughs> it's important to work out what people would find valuable. So I'm going to <laughs> offer this is fingers crossed everything working well i want to offer what i think would work but i really um want to have conversations about this and if people have got a really good idea say let's do a let's do a week on i can imagine something like let's do a week on world building mm. actually i should do that shouldn't i let's put that, in <laughs> that sounds um, like a good one yeah <laughs> yeah so you know the, the techniques and where you start and i think that so there's a i think we've got plenty of we probably will find that we have more ideas than capacity. Right. Yeah. I think, I think that's usually par for the course <laughs> and, and so, things like um, this. Yeah, we mustn't put the cart before the horse. So we've got right. to secure the house first. Correct. And, um, yeah. So living in the world of reality, I am really going full out to try and get this house, but we are living in the world of a commercial market. We are trying our best. We're putting out all the stops. We are doing all the fundraising we can but we have to be realistic if we fail to secure this house. Does that mean end of the story? Um, no, it doesn't, because the way charities work here is that when we set up this charity, we had to establish that we aren't only about the house. So we have three aims in our charity. One is to preserve and you know get the house and basically restore it to something mm -hmm. that Tolkien might um, recognise. From, from his era, yes. Yeah. yeah, the second is to do... Uh, I have to try to remember the exact wording. Uh, forgive me, I can't remember exact, but it's something like to promote an appreciation of mm -hmm. the works of J.R.R. Tolkien and his circle. So that includes, you know, like the other inklings, um, like C.S. Lewis and all that crew. Mm -hmm. um, so that's more about the sort of Oxford as a literary centre at his time, and that might involve going down the pub. Just, to, just, to, just warning there, because of course they always to meet down the pub. Right. <laughs> um, and then the third um, one is a more general education in a literary inspirational sense. So that's giving us a little bit of freedom to um, to expand the courses. If we want to have a broader look at fantasy, uh, we can do that. We don't want to be too, you know, it'd be stupid to sort of start in a straitjacket. Uh, so those two um, objectives are still possible. And that's what we will do. But I'm hoping we're having the house. I mean, I'm about yeah. that really uh, <laughs> but this is there's still lots of potential in Oxford for people to have a, to come and do these courses because there is nothing like that here um, th there's there's uh, conferences uh, you know excellent conferences are, that are more academic ab about the mm -hmm. authors but this is about using them as an inspiration for your creativity the next round of fantasy writers and filmmakers great
Um, so I do want to, uh, I would be remiss if we didn't take a little bit of time uh, covering um, some of the concerns that have been brought up on social media. Um, one question, and, and these came through on my questions when I was soliciting questions from, uh, from different avenues. Um, one is uh, regarding the phrasing of save Tolkien's house. Um, so I, I myself, I'll admit, I'm not familiar with landmark laws in the UK or really in the US for that matter here where I live. Um, but uh, what, would, what would you say to those who, who say, you know, the house is a listed building, it isn't in danger, it doesn't need saving. What, when you say save Tolkien's house, what, what sense do you mean that in? Yeah, save it for Tolkien enthusiasts. Because so, if it goes into another set of private hands, uh, that'll be that for however long the next owner is there. Mm. Uh, we won't have this opportunity to set up the Tolkien Centre. So it's it's now or never. Well, not now or never. It's now our generation for our generation. Yeah, this is this is our now. Um, yeah, so that's what that means. It's it's is that impetus is if you want to see this created then this is the chance to save it for, for all of us. Great. And um, I, meant to, I meant to ask this earlier, sorry. Um, so what, uh, what, what is your, give us a project update. Where are you guys at right now in your, uh, in your fundraising? I know, I think the website was updated a few days ago. I didn't know if you had any, uh, any uh, more. I don't know what today's numbers. figure is. Uh, so we've got three routes for giving. So the, the true figure is the combination of all these three. Right. There is a tax efficient giving in America through one platform. There's a tax efficient giving in the UK through Just Giving. And then there's, um, which only came in this week because we're such a new charity, mm -hmm. it was a rush. Uh, and then there was, then there's the PayPal um, donation route, which is, doesn't have the tax benefit. Um, so last I heard, we were about half a million, which isn't bad because we only launched last Wednesday. It feels mm -hmm. like 10 years ago. But <laughs> it's only been a week. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have long either because um, this is a house on the commercial market, which is why we had to go. Uh, you know, if I had, was lived in a perfect world, I would say, right, let's give us a year to plan it, mm. leisurely fashion. Um, but we don't have a year. Um, we've got a few months. So is... Uh... Is the the timeline of a few months? Is that just based on how long uh, has that been worked out with the seller? I haven't read anything uh, about that, so forgive me if that's on your website somewhere. I didn't know if that's uh, something with the the seller or just how the market yeah, kind of so, operates. Yeah, the seller is the one who is in charge of the house because it's his house. You right. Know? <laughs> that's that's the reality here. Um, so we have agreed to to mid-February but it is we got to move quickly to show that we're serious because if he thinks oh they're not raising enough money then he'll you know he don't there's no reason why he should favor us over other people right um and we're doing absolutely everything we can to secure that really really are great um so uh um I also wanted to ask one, one more um a question about um, some of the, the concerns that have been kind of floating around. Um, this is actually, there was a article in the guardian that, that mentioned this, that um, some people are concerned about um, the uh, perceived faith based aspect or whether, whether true or not, you know, some um, ha have said that they have concerned about, about the atten intentions I'm quoting here. There, there are concerns about the intentions of Christian groups involved. And I know you were quoting that article as well. Um, so I wanted to just yeah. kind of give you the, the platform, you know, what would you say to those expressing concerns that, you know, this is a faith-based or evangelical in nature uh, rather than Tolkien focused? Uh, well, so there is laws around charities and you have to say what your charitable objectives are. Okay. This is like the formal answer. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully you've picked up the Tolkien enthusiast already. Um, and we are firmly in the educational charity bracket. There are others, if you are a, a church or whatever, you can be, uh, I think there's something like the advancement of religion. 
if we were that, then we wouldn't be a literary center. So what we are is an educational center. Now, I want everybody to feel welcome. And part of Tolkien's identity was as uh, a Roman Catholic. Um, and I think his family still are. Many members are very, um, you know, they're sort of still, still with us, uh, right. very passionate about Catholic causes. Uh, and the Inklings group, which I mentioned earlier, has many, I mean, C.S. Lewis is famously a Protestant. Um, mm-hmm. But you got the cast really nice, you got the Catholic and Protestant. But that is the context they were in. It's, it's not, uh, there isn't a hidden, a hidden agenda there. So you can come, if you like Tolkien because you're a person of faith who is attracted to his values, welcome. If you like Tolkien because you're a humanist who thinks that he has um, a great heart, welcome. If you're an atheist who just thinks fantasy is a really fun way of constructing a world, welcome. The only thing that you need uh, to sort of feel welcome in the house is a desire to enjoy Tolkien's work. So I don't know. I mean, <laughs> one, of the, yeah. one of the things I think where it came from was that because we set up so quickly, the people who stepped forward to help us on the platform giving were small um, platforms with a Christian ethos. Mm. And that was because they answered the phone. <laughs> and they were the ones who said, yes, we will help you make this happen. But any giving doesn't stay with those platforms. And of course, there's PayPal. Um, and just giving is well, it's neutral. Um, it doesn't, it's governed by our objectives, not anybody else's. So you're giving to, yeah. It's, 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 this is a tricky area for me because it feels um, that I, I wasn't aware that that's how I would be perceived because I've, yeah. <laughs> I've spent 15, 16 years as a professional author writing for Harper Collins and Oxford University Press and Penguin. And, and so, so there's been a few books uh, from all different perspectives. Mm-hmm. And uh, I felt, I did feel a bit attacked by it, but not mm. that I'm, I actually, I do have a faith myself, but I also write from the perspective of being a woman, a perspective of being white i suppose Mm -hmm. you know there's all sorts of identities that everybody has right uh that we shouldn't have to apologize for yeah i felt a bit like i'm not out to get you (laughs) (laughs) that's why i just want to say that i'm not out to get anybody i'm i'm trying to create something wonderful uh for for tolkien fans and like you said i i think i i I loved oh sorry go ahead i i just i it's one of those areas where i think that probably the best answer is what we do and not what I say. So. Absolutely. I, yeah, I, I really liked your, uh, you know, uh, breakdown there. No matter who you are, yeah. you're welcome. It, I, I think, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I've seen that, that kind of gets lost from time to time is the fact that Tolkien and his works has, it's such a wonderful world that he created. It has the, through Tolkien, we, we can be uh, joined together. Yeah, exactly. Despite our differences. Exactly. Yeah, so he's our meeting point, isn't he? So yeah. if you're coming at it from, uh, I know, a very strong atheistic viewpoint, you can find common ground with somebody who's a Buddhist or a Christian or a, uh, you know, name your, name your religion. Anything, yeah. Uh, or, so yeah, that's, that's the aim. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, so I imagine, you know, a project of this size, very large project as, as we've stated. Um, so you're, I assume you're not taking this on entirely by yourself. (laughs) I, at least I hope not for your own sanity. Um, so tell me about, uh, kind of the team you've assembled and, uh, you know, uh, this is a chance to, to give a a little shout out to the people that are helping you along the way. We have been so lucky. So there's, uh, how many centers are there? So, I'm, I'm supported by my family, who um, a lot of them are helping me in between their working, <laughs> normal working lives. Um, and in the UK, then a lot of the uh, celebrities who sent in um, their videos are based in the UK. Right. And also there were connecting people who helped make the, you know, so there are people who've given goodwill, plus lots of volunteers of legal services, 
mm. uh, and other sort of more technical boring stuff. Um, over in the US, there's a wonderful person, my favorite person, well, you know, my, my, my husband does get first, first yeah. call <laughs> A new friend for, from the summer is a guy called Brian Boyd and his wife, Fran, who have been magnificent. We wouldn't have gone ahead without them. They have been so good at uh, making connections in the States because it's very hard to launch an appeal over there if you're sitting here. Um, mm making yeah. friends for us over there. And then there's another little group who helped with the video um, because last year I was interviewed by a guy who's an academic called Joe Leconte who wrote, wrote a book called, um, oh, I'm gonna get, Joe is gonna hate me and get wrong. It's it's, uh, it's one about the Great War, it's something like the the Hobbit, the wardrobe and the Great War. Oh something. yes, yeah. yeah. I know what book you're talking and Very good. Yeah, I'm blanking on it as well. Yeah. I can imagine the cover, but. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Joe and team are making a, a documentary about the Great War and C.S. Lewis and Tolkien. And I've written about the Great War as a historical novelist, not another of my interests. And uh, they interviewed me. And so when I thought, oh, I've got this video I want to edit, they so kindly donated their video um, editing skills. Um, who else? And then there's a very wonderful lady called Kirsten sitting in South Africa who's doing a lot of the social messaging. Um, Brian's team has lots of other people, like a graphic artist, and these are lots of people donating time. And we have got a PR agency as well um, who are doing it for an absolute shoestring. I'm sure if they were charging me their normal rates, I would <laughs> it would be eye-watering. Different they story, them. yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're another set of Tolkien enthusiasts. And... Uh, one of the they've been so good that that's been almost too much coming back at me sometimes <laughs> uh, we are um quite simple operation in the sense that we are a small charity set up to buy a house and establish a center and then the mm -hmm. whole world turns around and say yes come and talk to us so <laughs> that's why if, if you're not getting an instant response from me on your email i'm really sorry <laughs> i will get to you but my inbox is just slammed right now <laughs> yeah. um and we're we're trying to improve our systems but we uh we are learning very learning on the hoof yeah <laughs> which is very much a fellowship experience you know you pick it as you go along yeah uh, so. uh well we have a uh super chat donna hinkley thank you so much donna just uh gave five dollars so that will be going straight oh, to you, project northmore um for those of you who might have tuned in late, all Super Chats uh, will be going to Project Northmore. So if you'd like to ask a question or just say hi. Um, something I'd like to mention, which I haven't mentioned yeah. yet, which is, I think, haven't we all learned a lot in 2020? And one of the things I really want to develop is the virtual experience mm. of going to the house, because not everybody is going to be able to travel and afford to travel. So you want to make it really accessible. So part of what I'm thinking about is doing online courses and events, mm -hmm. but doing it in a really stimulating way. So, you know, um, with fun things thrown in like competitions and trivia and what have you, but also have that tutorial experience of uh, bringing along your creativity uh, and the whole kind of virtual tour of the house. You can be oh. at the seminar on your screen. Um, <laughs> so I'm hoping that that will in the sort of what is in it for me, I'm hoping that we can actually really multiply this um, to many, many more people who, for one reason or other, can't you know get to the physical house, yeah. which is only one house in one city in the world. Right. Yeah. As as someone here in the states, I I definitely appreciate that aspect of it. Um, if yeah. if there's one small, very small silver lining to come out of 2020. It's that I've been able to um, attend um, some Tolkien yeah. events like by the Tolkien Society and others that uh, otherwise I would not have because they were forced to go online. <laughs> so um, yeah. that's that's been a, a nice experience uh, for those of us here in the States, for sure. Um, that's, that's really great. And I've, I found myself doing things, well, the press, um, I don't know that the press worked like this beforehand. You. Mm. The ones I've been doing, I've done a couple actually with real people on the street, you know, that would just yeah. strange seeing a person. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I've just been sitting in my room hoping I've remembered to tidy up before they call me. 
Um, so I want to make sure I, I don't miss, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so Donna Hinckley, uh, she did ask a question with her, with her gift. Again, like I was saying, all super chats go to Project Northmore. So if you want to give a super chat, uh, that'll go directly to the project. Um, so Donna asked, and you covered this already a little bit, how big is the house and are you able to add on? I know you said it has somewhere around six bedrooms right now. but the, So the second part of that question, are you able to add on to the house? Yeah, seven bedrooms. The, the house, really nice thing about the house is it's, pretty much the same floor plan as it was when Tolkien lived there. The only alteration in the house since it, since it was built was made by Tolkien himself when he knocked down a wall in his what is his study, the largest room in the house. Um, you, because it's grade two listed, you cannot extend uh, mm -hmm. or knock it about. And I think that would be rather defeating the purpose of saying come to Tolkien's house if you then put on a massive extension, it would just right. ruin it. Um, the, the way it's organized that this is getting a bit down into the weeds here but there's some very strange there's some enormous bathrooms I'm sure it didn't the actual original house probably didn't have these enormous huge bathrooms, bathrooms. <laughs> so a bit of the research that needs to be done is to work out how to um, use the space efficiently mm -hmm. uh, without making any changes uh, I suspect there were probably more like eight bedrooms upstairs um, originally, oh, wow. but anyway, that's that's the job for to look at, look at the ancient the plans and have a think how this would really work. Um, but as from if if we get it from day one, it's able to c cope with small groups because it's well maintained and yeah. It, but it hasn't got um. It's, it's not a professorial feeling in it anymore. It feels like a house in twenty twenty. And I think it won't take that much, but it will be a wonderful makeover job just to, I, I'd like to make the downstairs feel a bit like the 1940s, but with central heating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much. And then the upstairs, each bedroom, it would be lovely to give them a different flavor. Mm. Like you would if you were decorating for a, a family, you might have one mm -hmm. child who likes one thing and, and one another. I thought it'd be really lovely to theme each room up subtly uh, after the different sort of cultures that he creates. Oh, I uh, like that idea. Yeah. So that sounds neat. This, this is one of my, my plans here. Yeah. Um, and I think so that you can say I'm staying in the, whichever bedroom it is, the elf mm -hmm. bedroom, yeah. and it'll give you a sort of yet more inspiration uh, for that. So that's one of my little plans. Oh, Wonderful. Plans. Well, we, we just got a few more uh, super chats in here. So Spencer Phillips, uh, thank you. He gave $10 and just thank said, <laughs> just put a little animated GIF on there. So that's fun. Um, Heather Huber uh, gave $5. Thank you for doing this. Uh, she says, J.R.R. Tolkien is beloved and I hope to see it one day. Um, and then we also got a five pound, which my conversion is not very good in my head so i'd have to look that up but thank you for five pounds uh, okay oh okay great um so ed asked um what would the funds go towards should the goal not be met and you kind of touched on this earlier so ed you'll you'll definitely want to check out earlier in the video but um yeah. julia you'd said that it, you would um still go toward the mission of uh um so yeah, there's still, yeah, a, there's, still, there's still a job to be done to create a course, a creative mm. writing course inspired by Tolkien in Tolkien City. There's that wall st that's still a possibility. This is the kind of what, this is the, I don't like looking on the negative, but you've got to be real. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as we know what the horizon is, that's what we'll, we'll consult everybody and say, this is what we're planning to do. Do you agree? If you are only here about the house, rather than the sort of bigger vision of what this creative center could be, then do use the PayPal route because then it's much easier to um, have your funds returned if, if we fail. Uh, because of the tax efficient giving routes, the others, it has to be given over so that for the tax laws of your, well, it's certainly the US laws and the UK. Mm -hmm. law. um, so that's, that's why it's like that. I'm, I'm trying to travel in hope yeah, absolutely. Care, be realistic um, that we can still do something really inspiring, um, but less perfect. Yeah, great. Um, so I'm a big fan of, uh, so I actually have one with me. Um, on day one, as soon as you guys 
announced this. I looked on the website and I ordered one of these shirts. Oh, very good. Um, did you get the right yeah, size? Yeah, I, I love I did get the right size, yes. <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine because like you, um, but I think it's being shipped. Okay, and, yeah. Don't tell, don't tell my family, but they're all getting one for Christmas. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so I love the artwork on this. So we've got uh, Gandalf, Bilbo, and then we've got Airbor and Smaug here in the background. Um, you guys can check this out on the website. So tell me about the, the artwork. How did you... Uh, yeah. Get the so artwork. It's, it's a really great one piece. called Keith Robinson, who's an illustrator here. Now, if I move my head slightly, yeah, which way do I go there? Can you see there's a picture on the wall behind me of a of a, a tigers called yes. Tigers the Cat? That's my most recent book for kids. Completely different from Tolkien, because actually one of the things I'm best known for in the UK is writing historical novels. That's kind of my you know, one of my most successful strings to my bow. Mm -hmm. And this is a book about um the closure of the menagerie, the zoo in the Tower of London, which had lasted from medieval times all the way up to just before Queen Victoria. So I'm really interested in that kind of long scope of history. Hmm. Anyway, so I loved the picture he drew. Uh, you've got these two li uh, two tigers, sorry, bursting out the tower with the main character uh, and so, so dynamic. Um, and so when and we'd obviously been in talking about this because this is a recent book. It came out in September. Um, so when I started off on my mad quest, I thought, who can I recruit? <laughs> and usually when you ask another writer, they either really like Tolkien or they really don't like Tolkien. It's a sort of, you know, Marmite factor, as we yeah. say here. That's how you know whether you want to continue the conversation or not. <laughs> I talk to people who don't like Tolkien. Just it's hard. Um, um, but why would I ask him, would he like to illustrate something for our for our website as a kind of visual image of our quest? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, I'll do that. And he did it really quickly uh, and and donated it to us. So all the proceeds from That's wonderful you know, after the sort of manufacturing cost of whatever you've ordered, uh, all the profit is going to um, Project Northmore and not to not to him. So yeah. thank you very much, Keith. Yeah. And it's a wonderful design. Like I said, I, I'm a big fan of it. I saw it has coffee mugs and uh, other such things. I didn't in time though. I didn't manage to get hold of him really quite late on in the day because, you know, I could have, but I think he's quite busy. Yeah. I, I think he might be involved in, is this right? Someone told me he's involved in the new Amazon. Is he? Oh, I don't know. That I probably started a rumor. <laughs> I, I'm not that is going to start yeah. trending now and it's going to all yeah. filter back okay. to you. I get, I said that. <laughs> anyway, but clearly he has many other calls on his time. So um, it was, I thought it was really fun to find another brilliant artist. I haven't managed to get hold of Alan Lee because apparently he lives in the middle of um, Dartmoor or somewhere. So I must actually mm. get out a proper letter and write to him. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Because <laughs> I think it's, there's and the other, um, I mean, there's not just, these people, I mean, there are many other, if you look, look along my bookshelves, there are lots of more illustrators as well. Mm -hmm. And if I haven't got round to asking them, it's not because I'm snubbing you, please don't think that. It's just that um, <laughs> I haven't quite got to you yet. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I, feel, I do worry that I'm, um, that if, if, you're, if you're well known in the Tolkien field and I, and you, I didn't get to you, that you'll think it's personal. It really isn't. It's just capacity. Yeah. Um, I, t I tend to be, following a, a trail of crumbs that one person suggests someone else who just suggests mm -hmm. someone else. Uh, so, yeah, I'd, I'd really like this to be um, genuinely, you know, welcoming for everybody. And uh, so that's the spirit I, I hope to approach everybody in. Great. So what, um, how do people uh, find, uh, Project Northmore, tell us your website and, uh, you yeah, know, how do they, how do they give? Fine. Yep. So we, we are, we are on, you know, social media platforms as mm -hmm. well. So the only thing you need is Project Northmore. Northmore is um, N North as in the direction and more as in M -O, o R dot org. And then you find us. Great. And you have different tiers I saw for, for giving yeah. with uh, some incentives there. Um, do you know those off the top of your head? <laughs> oh, I, I should do, because I think I made them up. Um, <laughs> I, like, I like sort of thinking about the whole sort of world and culture. So I thought, well, rather than say, you know, small giver, whatever, I thought, well, let's use Tolkien-esque ideas. Yeah. So 
the smallest hobbit size kind of little um you get your name this is all if we're successful in the, in the mm-hmm. red book the tolkien study is the idea yeah. and that's everybody does that yeah uh, once they give that that level then so is that the- a like a a uh, kind of registry book that would go in yeah, the, exactly. the house you know like the the book you see at the beginning of the film the absolutely book. i want something like that with everybody's names in well i think we'll have to i was, was thinking do we do it on date of giving or alphabetized mm. it's going to be interesting I, i'm going to amass this we obviously if you yeah only if you say we can have your data we're not going to put you in there unwillingly. i think it would be hard to because i would imagine people would want to find their names so I think in it's the book, so it's probably going to have to be alphabetical, I would think. It's going to, or by country, anyway. I'll, I'll, or by country, yeah. We're going to capture the data and work out how much, work out how that works um, so that it's, what's the word, so you can actually reference it. Yeah. Um, but the idea is, I'd love the idea of this is everybody's book sitting in the study. That, that's that. That's... Uh, and So that's a sort of uh, $25. I'll do the dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in the UK. Uh, then I went up in multiples of um, units. So then yeah. it's uh, Dwarf, and that's mm-hmm. a sort of $250. And there's a few more um, benefits to that. Plus, um, we want to create a like a, a design on the wall of all the names of these givers um, in a in a beautiful sort of image. Okay. So yeah. The names create the image, so that would be a sort of job for a graphic artist eventually. Yeah. And then after that, it's it's human size, not man size. We're doing, you know, <laughs> I, I I struggled to find um, you know, gender balanced images when I was right. looking. For, yeah, ah. but anyway, so it's human sized, and this is where we start getting quite serious. This is like uh, two thousand <laughs> five hundred um, dollars. Uh, and then you start talking about a sort of friend of the center status. And, mm-hmm. and then I'm not expecting many of these, but we have had <laughs> a few health gifts. That's in the th- um, 20,000 mm. and then uh, 25,000. Um, the actual details are all on the website rather than me. Great. Trying to yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> then it goes wizard. I, I, I'd love it if there's a wizard, but I'm not expecting a wizard. And I thought <laughs> almost, almost as a, kind of dare to the world yeah Anybody want to be a valor i.e the <laughs> gods of this all so um yeah have at it people right you've got <laughs> enough money to kind of yeah come and talk to us i haven't actually said what you get for that because i would probably just faint in <laughs> amazement and yeah um but that's the sort of serious um uh, long-term sponsorship relationship yeah um, well i'm sure you know projects like this uh you know, it takes takes donations big and small both to, yeah. to make something you, you like need this. You need big ones to kind of push you along a bit. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. The one thing I mentioned for the sort of larger giving uh, is the kind of in memoriam aspect. Mm-hmm. That many of us got to Tolkien through a beloved relative, parent, grandparent reading. Um, and if you wanted to have an area the garden dedicated or something like that i thought that would be suitable at those larger levels again just have a look at the website um because you know it's the people who pass it on that we're in debt to the one the ones who yeah. open the door for us great and um so uh I'll, I'll here's a couple i have i know we're we're running a little short on time here so we're going to wrap it up here soon um so just a couple little rapid fire questions for you um about your uh, your experience with Tolkien. So what is your favorite of Tolkien's books? Mm, uh, I actually decided maybe yesterday when I was talking to somebody else about this, because I've never really said pick. Yeah. Um, I've decided I like The Fellowship of the Ring best. The reason is, is I think that if you imagine that as a book on its own, because mm-hmm. obviously he didn't write it to be on its own but if you imagine though it's two books really isn't it um but if you imagine that volume it ends on disaster mm. doesn't it and dispersal and um, so one of the interesting things about Tolkien that sort of runs alongside his other influences is his uh fascination with northern cultures and the whole idea of Ragnarok 
So you could imagine a rather brave experimental fantasy novel, which ends there. Yeah. So I thought that'd be quite, I also like the, the, the traveling from the, the small worlds of the Shire and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger Balrog big. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's a wonderful journey. Yeah. Great. And um, second question, who's your favorite Tolkien character? Oh, I think it depends. I, I, there's a difference between the written page mm -hmm. experience to then the interpretations that kind of get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can pick one for each. That's totally fine. I do it all the time. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, I think that Gandalf is my favorite character in the book. Um and and in the Hobbit, I was I was got. I remember as a child getting um, a little bit cross when he went off. <laughs> he sort of thought, oh, well, don't go. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I don't think I really understood. As I said, I wasn't read the Hobbit. I sort of I think I read it at school. I didn't quite grasp it till after I'd read Lord of the Rings and went back to it. But still, Gandalf emerged as a favourite. Um, in the films, oh, that would be. Oh, that's so hard. I I do like Erwin. Mm. I mean, partly because there is a shortage of um, good, strong female roles. And I mm. love the, the fact that she gets the moment. Yeah, being, absolutely. Being, um, so, so, so that, that I, I always want to cheer at that bit. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so since, since you brought up the films, I'll go ahead and follow it up with uh, which is your favorite of the films? Hmm. This is also a tough one. It is. It will probably be the fellowship again. Hmm. Do you, were you, I'm not sure how old you are, but um, do you I'm remember 36. The year, the year of waiting between fellowship and when they finally were running across Rohan? Oh, yeah. A whole year of just torture waiting for this to start <laughs> up again. Um, is that my Yeah, I think because of the Balrog scene, that mm. is for me the standout moment. Absolutely. I think the fear, I, I remember being scared before the film came out that somehow Peter Jackson would make a mess of it and it would feel just, you know, wouldn't live up. Wouldn't be the same. Film. Yeah, yeah. Live up to the imagery. And that's the scene that's better than what I imagined. That says uh, a lot. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty fantastic. And so, so this is where you just really enjoy other people's creativity. Yeah. Uh, to sort of fill out something which you were thinking of, but your imagination hadn't fully, you know, coloured and imagined. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll stick with the fellowship. Keep Great. It yeah, that's a good that's a good answer. <laughs> to be fair, they're all good answers. So, um, so we do we do have one more super chat. I'll I'll make this the last uh, last um, question for you here. Um, do you plan? Uh, this is from. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna butcher his name, and I apologize in advance. Uh, Rizn, Rizard Derzins, Derzinski. I am oh, so sorry, I'm Richard. He's he's an Elven expert. Oh, okay. Oh, he's, Great. A, he's a real. He's he was brilliant. I I should have given him a shout out earlier. So, um, one of my favorite bits in our promotional video is uh, Leith McPherson, the dialect coach. Mm. Uh, on the hobbit reading a yeah. bit in um elvis right Patsy. yes yeah but I, I hadn't really thought about this enough when i i sort of thought she might know these languages and of course she doesn't she's just a di well, not just she is a dialect coach yeah so I, she she said oh well you know can you get these translated for me so i went to my academic friends like mark atherton who wrote the book about the hobbit recently and, and others and said do you know do you know elvish no <laughs> and so I then went to Twitter, hooray, <laughs> and very quickly found Richard, who mm. I hope I was the call that he's always been waiting for, because he he instantly responded and produced a beautiful translation and talked to Lisa about how it was said. Uh, he also helped us because we don't, um, you know, we're not elven, elvish experts. Right. Um, so if we got something wrong on our website, he told me corrected yeah yeah and we got it put right and he helped us get it put right anyway so that's richard i think he lives great in yes yeah he did he so uh his question oh so his question is and and thank you for giving richard um 
Do you plan to edit and publish any literary magazine on Tolkien and the Inklings? Oh, what an idea. Uh, can I f put that in my box of really good ideas? <laughs> um, probably these days, I'd imagine it would be more like a blog, so mm. something virtual. Digital, yeah. And it would be part of what I imagine as the wider engagement. I'm quite, I, I also have a feeling there might be an appetite for a bit of... Um, like pub quiz type Tolkien, like mm. find out the world champion. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of wondering about some more fun engagements like that. But this would be, let's get past this. Let's get the house. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's me tending to run away with myself. But I would like to sort of um, really engage in the sort of fun trivia aspect that, yeah. that you sort of test each other on. Yeah. Right to the very serious uh, responses to Tolkien creativity i think we can we can manage a breath yeah so you mentioned earlier you know you're obviously uh going to be listening to fans on you know what what kind of things they uh what ideas they have what what they kind of things they love to have as far as courses and stuff like that is there a way that they can currently you know through email or something to yeah, so submit contact, ideas yeah there's a contact page on our website uh, at the moment, probably if you send in an idea, it will just, uh, uh, you know, you, you'll get a thank you for your idea. We're not mm -hmm. quite there yet. So right. do take some time thinking about it. And if we're successful, then um, the messaging will change and it will mm -hmm. be, this is what we're thinking of. Do you have any suggestions? And we'll, we'll be taking a, a straw poll in that sense of what people are asking for. Already on the events page, I've, I've um, put a call out for people who are illustrators to say, um, there's a an email there to register your interest in the events. Mm. So have a look at that. Great. And I've also said there if you want um, if you want to join like a sort of group of people to advise. Um, I've, I've given it the temporary. I think the name is Eored, which is a old English word meaning like a band of riders, which is then used. Tolkien uses that old English word for Rohan. So I thought, well, that's a nice idea. Mm -hmm. So I, I was thinking that we could build a, a little group of, a, you know, people who really want to be involved in building this centre. It's, I've been talking a lot about my ideas, but that's just because it's me sitting here talking. Actually, it's going to be a joint effort. I'm right. only one person. I've already got other authors talking to them about the kind of courses they might want to do. So I've got a really good friend who edited me at one stage um, who is one of the few um, black women working in uh, editing here. It's a very unbalanced um, area diversity wise. So there's a definite interest in expanding the kind of voices coming into um, fantasy. Cause I think Tolkien, even though he's a professorial guy he appeals to cultures and people the world over. So we want to use that entry point and say what about you? What's your voice from your experience? Uh, so these conversations have begun, um, but we are only a week into our campaign. Absolutely. So I apologize if I don't have every answer, for, uh, you know, tied off. Right. So um, I know we need to, we need to get wrapped up here. So um, I, is there anything else, um, you know, you would like to say as we, um, you know, are, are wrapping up this live stream with our, our obviously uh, audience of very big Tolkien fans here. So is, is there anything else you'd like to say to them before we, we kind of wrap up? Yeah, I, I, I say, please support if you can. Uh, we realize it's a really difficult year and hasn't it just been difficult. So only give what you can afford. But if you would like to end the year, the beginning of next year, on a really positive note so that we can actually create something new and beautiful, that's what we're about. That's what we're really inviting you to share, share in. So please come along. Great. Well, thank you so much again for joining me today, Julia. Um, I wish you best of luck with Project Northmore. And uh, I look forward to seeing the updates and um, as, as things continue to get flushed out and... Um, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing the progress. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone who uh, joined us on the live stream today. Um, just so you know, I'll be resuming my regular videos here on the channel on Saturday. So be sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Um, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings. <laughs>